okay, let's do a video. Let's talk about aim. Okay. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay. So what's the reason that, uh, okay. Go, go, go. All right. Let's talk about aim really quickly. Like just some really rudimentary basic stuff that a lot of people understand. But <clears throat> a lot of, a lot of people, I mean, when you're learning, when you're, you're learning how to play CSGO, like how to peak things, aim is a, aim is a, is a bunch of different things all in one, right? It's like where your crosshair is, then there's your tracking aim, and then there's your flicking aim. There's your crosshair placement, how you're peaking angles, your keyboard movement comes into your aim. There's proper counter strafing. This is aim. This all counts towards your aim mechanics. Can you stop on a dime and shoot? How are you clearing angles? And that's all the mechanics on your end. But then on the other side of things with your team, uh, your team can, uh, your team can give you information. So, you know, there's there's kills that are gonna happen like this, okay? Somebody's sitting here, someone's sitting here, boom, okay? And you're, you're coming in from outside or you're sitting here and your teammate says, one squeaky right now holding the door. Just a random thing that wouldn't always happen, but sim similar situations. So you know he's here, right? You visualize that. So then, you know, you peek and pre-fire it. That, when you do that, you don't have to have good reaction time because you're gonna shoot immediately or you're even gonna shoot with a wall bang before you even see them. These kinds of duels and uh, happen all the time in CS and they're gonna result in a lot of kills. They're really important. So, not only is, you know, AIM saying, okay, there's a guy who's gonna swing on me, I'm gonna hold like this. Or, oh, there's a giant guy jumping across my tree and I gotta track, you know, I gotta track like that. That's not also, also aim is, you know, is counter strafing, it's pre-aiming, it's your keyboard movement, it's pre-firing as well. All of these things are, are aim related, okay. And then you have audio. If you have audio and some game sense, like you played for a bit, then you can, let's say, um, Let's say a guy was like, let's peeking around a box. All right, let's say it's one of these duels. You know, let's say a guy shot from right here and you think he's gonna come to this side. So you're here out in the open, you're like, oh shit, he's peeking me. I was gonna walk up to go back here to chill, but now I'm in the open. Oh, he starts shooting from that way and then you think he's gonna shoot this way. So now you're, you're aiming on that side, purely off of your intuition as to where you think he's gonna peek or you know how long it's going to take him, or you have an audio cue to pre-fire, or you have a shadow advantage in certain angles. A lot of these things go into it, you know? So aim is not just one thing, and it's definitely not just your flicking and your tracking. So when you want to get better, when you're, when you want to get better, when you think about CS, there's some verticality on some of these fights, and Nuke is kind of a vertical map a little bit, but for the most part, I'd say it's, you know, 70, 80% horizontal, okay? when you're strafing, counter strafing, and when you're aiming at things, most of the stuff is happening side to side. And most of the time your crosshair is just sitting level like this. So your crosshair is just sitting level like this. And when you're coming around angles and stuff like that, most of the time you're thinking where's head height. Most of this ground is completely flat. This is a completely flat texture here on Nuke, totally flat. And most of your fights are coming in horizontally. Okay, so that's actually the most important part. And when you're training and you're doing aim trainers and stuff like that, then you should be doing uh, you should be doing exercises that have a lot more horizontal movement than vertical. In other games, like if you were to play Valo or you're to play Overwatch or you're to play something else where you know characters go up and around and stuff like that, or Quake, you have to have you know much more you know uh, much much more range of movement. But in CS your sense can be relatively low. It's really about, you know, most of the fights are happening within 50 degrees on your screen. And most of the fights are happening almost horizontally. And this, this game is mostly about setting up your fights, not as much as trying to win 50, 50 duels all the time. Right. You know, if I, if I'm walking up here to go to this position to end, 
and I get caught out here, this is where you fall back on good aim to like help you out. Like, oh shit, he peeked me. Now I just have to win my duel and I have to guess where he's coming from. But CS is about getting to this position on a nice timing and then getting into this angle and then, you know, shooting them in the side of the head when they walk out, right? It's not about facing them face to face and then taking a 50-50 duel. But when you're in, in the game, you have to be ready for both situations. That's why you want to have, you know, that's why you want to improve your aim. So, you know, all, all these different things. Now for what is um, crosshair placement, and uh, this is something to, when you, when you learn your maps individually, you're gonna learn all your different maps. Your crosshair placement is gonna allow you to peek something, let's say deep in the hut here. And you can see I'm aiming into the silo when I peek. And then when I stop, I'm aiming into the hut. Okay, but what I don't want to do is this. You don't want to peek like this because it's inefficient. This is much cleaner, all right? So in CS, you, you, skip, you skip some stuff. You don't just hold every single corner and go tight around every single wall, only certain situations. So here, if I think they're going to be in hut, I'm peeking like this. I'm not peeking like this over and over again, okay? That's inefficient. Look how hard it is for me to like consistently aim for the right spot. Instead, I'm just pre-aiming and I'm swinging. All right. And CS is just about chopping it up and figuring out like how you want to take those fights in that way when it comes to your crosshair placement. And now let's say someone's like sitting in the hut here and you've got them in the corner and you could wall bang them and you think they're going to peek. There's a situation where you don't want to waste your bullets because they could still peek you and kill you. You don't hold the angle here, right? When you do that, because when they peek, they're gonna go out here, okay? And if you shoot, and you're holding here, you have to flick to their head, which is here now. So instead you just hold here right away. All right, so crosshair placement is judging how far do you have to hold it. So if someone's coming into the hut, I'm holding, you know, here. And some peaks are gonna be really tight. I mean, some people are gonna jiggle you like crazy and those are hard to hit. But let's say you don't expect, they don't know where you are then you're, you, they don't, you don't, you don't, they don't know where you are. Then they might just walk into your fight. So you hold a little bit wider. You, you think about where their head level would be a little bit depressed on the ground here and a little bit out from the wall. And they might do this. Okay. They might do this like this and then boom, you're standing right here. Okay. This is what's called an off angle. So, uh, this is an amazing segue into this next talk. All right. No Pepe homes. So. If an, an off angle is an angle that you hold that catches somebody looking at something else. So if, if I'm holding here, I'm holding an off angle because the guy who's coming to peak hut is not ready for where I'm standing. Now imagine you're here and you don't know any, where anybody is, but you're just thinking, oh, this guy is always, you know, it's RPK, it's Kyojin. He's always on the back of the site here. So I'm going to pre aim here and swing like this to try to fight him. And when I do this, boom, my, my opponent is right here. He shoots me in the side of the head. If I think that someone's here and then I'm, you know, slowly clearing these angles, making sure no off angles can exist. And then there's this one, there's this one. Does it mean there are on angles? So just like this, how I'm pre-firing here, right? If I come in on a timing, there's going to be a chance for someone to walk out. And if they don't catch me, if I catch them on a moment where they're not peeking, then I'm pre-aiming this and then suddenly they're out a little bit and I have to adjust. So you have to be aware of, let's take a good example here on dust two. One of my favorites to explain like what a nice off angle is or what a good angle is. What's really important when you think about your fights. And honestly, this is something not a lot of people do enough. And that is thinking about what your opponent is going to be looking at. You have to put yourself in your opponent's shoes or you just have to put yourself in uh, in your own shoes if you were in that position. So, okay. so here is a really good example of this. Okay. So when people are entering, uh, when people are entering, let's say they're entering slowly on, on uh, dust two, everyone stays on this half of the hallway and then they clear angles like this, right? And then they clear angles like this and they clear angles like this and they clear angles like this, right? Maybe they walk up to the tunnels, they go like this, they don't see anybody, then they go like this, then they go like this, then they go like this, 
and then they go like that, and then they clear the window, right? Yes or no? That's what you would do if you walk into the tunnel, right? Okay. So, now, boom. If I hold this angle right here, okay? I hold this angle just like this. Now, even though you're sitting on this angle, if, you've, if they know where you are, they can peek you however they want. Okay? But if they don't know where you are and they're coming in to clear the site and they go to clear window, then boom, you have them right here clearing window. So this is an important part about when you're thinking about what's an off angle or not, think about what your opponent is, is, looking, is gonna be looking at naturally or what they would be clearing. And if they go left side and yeah, they can, you know, they can go left side and throw lurk smoke and jump out and go over top. And sometimes nothing is a hundred percent. If you're just going to, you know, hold an angle like this the whole time, you risk having to do this to, you know, watch up top or, you know, some people will just hold out for this side and they'll take this fight first and then this fight, because they'll, if no one peeks the side of this box, they might think Xbox is clean, but that's what you should be thinking about when it comes to what you feel like is an off angle. Like try to put yourself in your own shoes. If you were on the other side, on the other side of the crosshair, you know, um, should you think about off angles when pre-aiming? So, okay. Yeah, of course, you know, so let's say you have, I think it's about, uh, if you have the ability, have you ever been in a situation? Okay. Where let's say you're here and there was so much noise. And you think, oh, they might come cat. They threw smokes and nades. You don't know what's going on at mid, but you can hear them throwing mid B smoke, flashes, stuff like that. And you're like, all right, perfect. I'm like, I'm feeling good because they might just run into this. That's what you want. But it goes silent. And then you're sitting up here and now you're scared. Now you're shitting your pants right? You're scared. Why? Why? What is that feeling? That feeling is that now that they're not, now that they're not making any noise and not throwing shit and they're not communicating, they could be quietly chopping up all of these angles. Okay. Going really slow. That's why you're scared because you recognize that now suddenly you're off angle since you're out in the open. It's not even that good because they're now they're going so slow, they might take their time and clear you. Yes, and thank you for the prime sub. Does that make sense? So you wanna recognize, even when you feel like that, that's for a reason. You know you're suddenly in a, in a kind of a more dangerous spot. You know that they might actually take their time and clear you. You should always think about that when you're playing. Don't even, don't just second guess it and go, oh, I'm just scared because no reason. There's a reason, because you know, you've played the map a thousand times, you've held this angle a thousand times, you, your, your mind is telling you something, okay? That, oh, it's quiet now? Wow, I might actually get hard cleared here. And then you die, right? So instead, you know, respond to that. Go back to something more default or something, you know? Sometimes your off angles are really good. Sometimes they're gonna get hard cleared because this game, um, because, this, uh, because this game is, now it's a lot about off angles. Everyone's trying to find a new, better off angle, a crazier way to hold. And there was, um, some Reddit study done about uh, reaction or uh, uh, peakers advantage, and they were arguing that peakers advantage is going to exist whether or not there's ping discrepancy. So ping affects peakers advantage as well, but the main reason why peakers advantage exists is simply because the person peaking has a heightened reaction time to the person holding the angle. This is the whole value of holding the off angle, because once you because the guy who peaks always gets that shot off first. And the way I like to explain uh, how, don't Pepe me, the way I like to explain how you, uh, uh, wh why a player has a heightened reaction time when they're peaking is for this reason. Okay. Say I'm, uh, this is, you know, early, an early round. This is an early round fight. Okay, let's say here. Okay. Let's say I'm this guy holding mid for this lurk. Okay. You can win this fight. If they walk into you or not ready, you can win this fight. It happens all the time. It's a great spot to be on some, on some, on some situations you're holding, you're holding, holding. Okay. Now imagine your reaction time is a ball that you're squeezing. Okay. 
you're squeezing this ball as hard as you can because you want to make sure you're sharp when you hit this fight. Okay? But you can't squeeze this ball at 100% forever. You're using your you're using your your gas, your juice. You're squeezing your ball holding. Your eyes are peeled. Your eyes look like fucking egg whites. They're starting to turn red. They're getting dry. You're holding this. That's taking energy, it's taking focus, and nobody can hold this ball and squeeze it hard for a long time at 100%. It starts to drift a bit. This is why we call it fall asleep at the wheel, you know? So the per the person who is holding this angle doesn't know if there's a duel coming or when. So they can't stay at 100% for that whole time, okay? Stewie does that thing when he holds angles. Yeah, the little movement thing. Yeah, stay to stay awake, exactly. Everyone has something. And if you're ROPS, you don't need anything. You just stay focused the whole time. You can hold angles 100% for the whole round. But not everyone does that, okay? And so think about this guy, okay? He's just do-do-do, like chilling, doesn't give a fuck about anything. And then he's thinking, oh, there might be a guy here. He's, he was relaxed for the last five seconds walking all the way through spawn, all right? He was chilling. They're like, oh, it might be mid-B. Hmm. Nothing to worry about. I'm on my side of the map. And then suddenly it's like, oh, okay. Maybe I'll start focusing now. And there's going to be a player here on the other side of the box. Now what happens? He squeezes that ball, that reaction time ball. He's at 100%. And then boom, you're dead. That's it. He ha that's why he has the advantage. He comes out fully ready and didn't have to focus for that whole time holding. So that's the whole idea behind having off angles is that you at least mitigate some of the advantage that a player has when they peek into you. If they come out peeking and... If, he come, if, I, if I come out peeking like this, because I think you're going to be here, and then you're right here, it gives me at least a little bit. You know, they have to hit that flick, and then they can uh, have an extra moment to react. But don't expect, don't expect to hold a hard angle, and if someone hard clears you, to just win that duel, you know? Uh, then how's the correct way to hold an angle? Well, it's circumstantial. I mean, this fight, you'll see you'll see in pro matches that this, you know, this 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 is a very like say your teammates through nades long and then you come out mid and you want to hold for this duel to catch a rotator cuz you came out early. This is a normal thing to do, but it's on a specific timing. If you're out here and the CTs realize you could be out here, this suddenly becomes not a very good spot. But if they your, your opponents think you just took long control and they ran back to go take over Cat and you're one of the players rotating through spawn, then suddenly this could be a good angle because they're not exactly ready for you. You know? Exactly. And if everything goes silent and then you realize they might be thinking about you, you know, you want to respond, you want to respond to that. Uh, yeah, there's also right and left side. Okay, there's also right and left side. So if you are... Generally speaking, if you're peeking into something like uh, like here, if I peek this, this is a right side peek, right eye peek, which means I have a small advantage on the person who's holding. I'll see their body slightly before they see mine. Uh, this is kind of an annoying thing to tack onto this, but this exists. So I just want to, uh, I, I will say, uh, one thing that's important about this, uh, it's because of where the camera is. So... In Counter Strike, you know, you're we don't have legs, number one. And number two, our camera, our gun actually comes out of our face. Okay. So it's not exactly realistic, but like I can sit here in pit and shoot without my gun being over the wall because the bullets are coming out of my fucking eyes. You know what I'm saying? So the game is, is a little bit weird in that way, but that's just how it is. Um and your camera is also just a little bit cocked. You're a little cockeyed. So whenever you're taking a fight don't think about this too much because it's a small advantage. And as you get better, when you look for every little advantage, it'll matter. But I remember like this might be hard to understand, like to remember for every single fight. But generally, when you're peeking onto the right like this, you have a small advantage versus the guy who is holding. But that doesn't mean all fights in that situation. Like I, I want to be very clear that every everything is circumstantial, even situations like this, because you'll see this. You'll see this being held in uh, pro games. In the circumstance, if they don't think you're there, it's worth it to hold it. And also, the other thing, um, the other two things about this are that number one, if you crouch, your model is a tiny bit wider because you go frog mode a little bit. Your tiny uh, model is a tiny bit wider, okay, when you're holding an angle as opposed to standing. But 
if you're standing, you might get pre-fired in the head. And you might get pre-fired in the head if you're crouching too, but that's why you've just got to trust whatever you feel is right, okay? Sometimes. Sometimes you want to stand. Sometimes you want to crouch. But yeah, sometimes you go wide people here and then regular people here. Okay, so it's 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 it depends too, you know. Some people are gonna hold for that crouch peak properly. Some people hold at head height. It's uh, you got to use your. But let's not get. This is gonna be. I just want this to be very in general about like how you should be thinking about your duels in this game. Uh, you know. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> Is there anything else about aim that we didn't talk about that's like just a very basic thing that somebody asked? Um, recoil, okay. With, with your spray, in my opinion, all, I, all you need to do to learn your spray is to just spray on a wall. Uh, I, I personally think this is the best way, at least at first. I don't think it helps to look at a pattern like this when you go like this and then try to copy it upside down and reverse. It, to me, that doesn't really, that's, that, that to me, that's not, um, that doesn't help me. That never helped me. So I can't, I don't want to, you know, I don't, I don't want to prescribe advice that w I wouldn't use. But in my opinion, like if you want to, learn the spray, I would go like this, okay? Your first bullets are just gonna go mostly straight up. So mostly, I'm just gonna pull down like this. And I mean, these are the most important parts of your spray anyway. So I'm just gonna go like this until I'm very, very good. I'll give it a second to let the gun cool down in between my bursts. And then and then after that, you can just add on to your, you know, to, to the spray by pulling right and then left and then right slowly. And just add on a few bullets as you learn and just keep repeating and that's it it'll take you a few days if you don't know the sprays to get to a good point but um in my opinion that's all you need to do you don't understand smoke grenades what uh what do you mean what about smoke grenades do you not understand uh, spray transfer a good map is like uh qk underscore aim underscore training for spray transfers where you can practice qk underscore aim underscore training um but yeah spray transfer is just, it's just like like there, there's different parts of your spray like your first few blows you're pulling down and then suddenly you're off to the right see my crosshair is down here my spray is up here so let's say i want to shoot here after i spray transfer so my first few bullets might go here and then my my spray is off to the top right on this side. Now, if I do it to the left, my bullets still go off to the right. So I have to control and realize that my bullets are going to be more above my crosshair, not off to the right. But you just get used to it. Don't think about, oh, I have to memorize. It's a feeling thing. When you're playing the game, you're not going to be thinking about that, counting the bullets and where your bullets go. Don't do it like that. Just, pra just repeat. Just keep repeating it until you get used to it. When spraying, do you pull down um, hard or low? uh pulling down uh when you spray okay so you can you i mean you can just you know you can 30 bullet spray standing up you can you can actually spray pulling down for the bit and then actually just crouch and that does the rest of it um you can uh you can crouch in the whole time and spray but yeah what in what scenario should i use a smoke grenade oof that's a big question um <clears throat> how to defend a rush round as a soul